Sayyid from Saudi Arabia says, how to do istikhara and how do we know that the answer? Well, this is a common misconception. When people want something, they usually think that by praying istikhara, something will happen so Allah would show me the choice. So if I want to buy a red car or a black car, and I'm hesitant, I'm not sure which one is best. So I pray istikhara and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to choose for me. And then I expect maybe lightning, thunder, maybe a dream, maybe uh, a black cat would come into the house. So I know I should buy a black cat or a blue uh, uh, dog or whatever starts to, to bark. This is not the case. Istikhara is that you have to make a choice. So you do your homework, blue or black, mm, no, I'm going to go for blue. Black always gets dust and, and it always looks dirty and scratches appear easily on it. I'm going to go for blue. I made up my mind. Then I pray istikhara. Asking Allah Azza wa Jal to facilitate it for me if there's good in it for me or otherwise to deflect it away from me and decree what is best for me. So now I've, I've got my mind made up and I have the car in mind. I've got the money in my pocket. I prayed my istikhara, I go to the showroom the following day with my money, with my documents, and I continue to buy the car normally. If there's good in it for me, Allah would make it happen. So many times, a lot of the brothers, I, I face this myself, something happens that stop the process. So I've got my money, I have everything. When I go there, oh, it's a far away uh, uh, showroom. And when I reach there and they say, okay, let's do the documents and everything, registration, they take my ID card to Xerox it and all of a sudden it doesn't work. So I said, oh, I'm sorry, we can't go ahead with the process until uh, we Xerox your ID card. Come tomorrow, we'll try to fix it. And it's a half an hour or an hour drive. I know that this is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Immediately I feel this is not my car, alhamdulillah. So this is the concept of istikhara, that you choose. You want to marry a, a woman, you, you saw her, and, uh, or you're going to see her tomorrow, you're going to propose tomorrow, you pray istikhara and go ahead with it. It's not a dream that you're going to see. There's no thunder or lightning that will come and, and tell you, or a voice from the heavens telling you, okay, go ahead and take it. It's nothing like that. You're simply asking Allah to facilitate things for you. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, go ahead, sister. You're on the air. Okay, um, I've got a question about istikhara. Yes. After praying salat al istikhara, how do you differentiate between what you're inclined to and what Allah has directed you to? Um, so, if you have two options and you uh, before praying istikhara, mm -hmm. you didn't, you didn't really, you weren't inclined to either. Um, but then after praying istikhara, because I, I heard that you shouldn't follow what you're inclined to, but you should follow what. Allah has directed you to, but then I really don't understand how, okay. how you know that. Realize, my dear sister in Islam, that there is so much myth around istikhara that, uh, wallahi, it's just depressing to see so much myth put around istikhara. And there are unreasonable expectations and ridiculous conditions put upon the one doing istikhara. It is humanly impossible for you to have uh, two or three options and every single time you have zero inclination towards any one of these options more than the other. Maybe sometimes this is possible, but in every single time you have two options and your heart is dead neutral, this is impossible. You get a lucrative job offer for, of, mashallah, 100,000 pounds, and another job offer of 50,000 with much worse working conditions, of course your heart is going to be inclined towards the 100,000 offer. You get a, a proposal from a brother who's, mashallah, meets all of your criterion, whereas another proposal he meets one or two and and the rest are not met, of course your heart will incline towards uh, the former rather than the latter. This is a ludicrous condition that honestly has no basis in the Sharia ah to put this condition that your heart has to be neutral. Rather it is expected that your heart will be inclined towards one and it's impossible to change that human expectation. So istikhara is not meant to play with your emotions. Istikhara is meant to open up the avenues from Allah Azza wa Jal regarding which path is better for you and which path is not better for you. So, let me give you a, a scenario. 
Suppose uh, you wanted to rent an apartment and you saw the apartment and you're looking for apartments. You see one, everything fits and you're so happy and your heart is jumping for joy. I got the deal. You go home, you pray istikhara. You go home, you pray istikhara. What happens? All of a sudden, when you go to sign the paper, uh, the, the landlord says, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry, but uh, the deal is not able to go through. Or another technicality happens and you don't get your uh, apartment that you want. This is your istikhara being put into effect. Why? Because the meaning of salat al-istikhara is that Allah Azza wa Jal will block the avenues that are harmful to you and open up the avenues that are better for you. Therefore, do as your heart wishes. Do as your heart is content in doing. And if that is good for you, the doors will open up. And if that is not good for you, those doors will not open up and Allah Azza wa Jal will divert you somewhere else. And you will be content in this diversion because you will realize this is the result of my istikhara. And I hope that that uh, clarifies.